Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 29 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's dig in a quick sampler in Logic Pro, which is one of several ways that you can create your own unique and playable instruments in the application. With Quick Sampler, you can quickly and easily create your own sampler instruments based off of a single audio file that you can then play up and down the keys of a keyboard at various pitches, or you can break up a sample into individual slices and beats and then perform rhythmic patterns with, and so much more. To get started with Quick Sampler, the easiest way is just to start dragging and dropping. For example, let's navigate to the Finder on my Mac, and let's grab this audio file from my desktop, click, hold, and drag right into the tracks area. And what we're gonna do is instead of dropping this audio file into the tracks area as a region, let's drag it right over the track header section of the tracks area. And once we do, we get this drop down menu offering us a variety of different instruments and samplers that we can load this sample into. And at the top, we have two options for quick sampler. We have original as well as optimized. We'll explore the differences between these two momentarily. Upon letting go of my mouse, a new track is created in the tracks area. Quick Sampler has been loaded into the instrument slot for that channel strip, and my sample has been loaded directly into Quick Sampler. All right, from here, we can start playing our sample as an instrument. Before we do, though, let's open the Apple Loop browser by pressing key command O, and let's actually drag in a pattern region for a software instrument Apple Loop. So keep in mind, this is not an audio file at all. Let's drag it in right onto Quick Sampler, and once again, we get two options for both original as well as optimized. Once I let go again, We've now swapped our sample for this Apple loop. Once again, we can just start playing with a keyboard or musical typing. But one more thing, let's close the Apple loop browser and let's load an instance of drummer. Just to illustrate that we can also drag in regions from the tracks area into quick sampler as well. So Logic has just bounced this region in place to create an audio file from this drummer region, which has once again been loaded into quick sampler. And what's super cool is if we click on this drop down menu at the top of Quick Sampler, we can actually flip between the different samples that we've loaded. Just keep in mind that you can only work with one sample at a time in Quick Sampler. Okay, next, what's the difference between original and optimized when we're loading our samples into Quick Sampler? Well, basically, it boils down to whether or not you want Quick Sampler to consider details like the pitch of the sample, the loudness. Do you want Quick Sampler to search for loop points or crop silence from the sample if there's any silence at the beginning and end? Or do you want Quick Sampler to just completely ignore these details when you load a sample? For example, I've once again loaded my sample into Sampler, and we can see there seems to be nothing going on at the beginning and end of the sample, and our sample's been placed indiscriminately on the key of C3. However, if we go to the settings menu in the right-hand corner of Quick Sampler, we can choose to re-import our sample either as original or optimized. Now we've seen some changes. We can see that the start and end markers for our sample have been adjusted. So if we press a key on a keyboard, we will immediately hear our sample instead of having to wait through some silence to hear it. The vocalist just happened to be singing in the key of C natural minor. So the root key of the first note of this performance actually is C3. So that was a lucky break. But if we select our Apple loop from the dropdown, we can see that the root key is set to F2. If we open the Apple Loop browser, we can see that the key of the sample is F minor. Whereas if we drag this Apple Loop into the tracks area and drag it into Quick Sampler using original, Logic bounces the region as an audio file and the sample is just placed indiscriminately again on the key of C3. Cool, at this point, we can just get right down to making music with our sample. Let's bring up the musical typing. And if I press the A key on my Mac's keyboard, this will be C3, and we'll hear this sample play back. Let's switch the mode to classic in Quick Sampler. We'll dig into the different modes in just a moment. Let's play C3 with the sample. Cool, let's bump down the musical typing and let's now play the sample. All right, so the sample plays back at an octave below, but the sample also plays back at a slower tempo. Let's bump up the octave range to that of C4 and take a listen. 
Our sample is now playing back at a higher pitch, but also at a faster tempo. Now, maybe this works for you. Maybe it works for your productions. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you want the sample to play back at the exact same tempo, regardless of the pitch. Well, luckily, if we click on this flex button in Quick Sampler, that's exactly what will happen. I'll try playing the sample at the three different octaves. C3. And C2. Now with the sample set to the exact same tempo, regardless of the pitch that it's played at, we can then choose different speeds for the tempo with flex enabled. For example, we could cut the tempo in half. Or maybe double time. And you may notice that this follow tempo option is enabled, which is exactly that with flex enabled and follow tempo enabled. If we adjust the tempo of our project, our quick sampler instrument follows suit. Pretty awesome. Playback of our sample can go both in forward or reverse. Additionally, we can add a loop to our sample. So once the playhead and quick sampler reaches the loop point, our sample will loop over and over again in a particular direction. I'm adjusting the loop start and end points to this particular section right here. And we can also move the entire loop section very easily. So let's hear this loop play back and forward. So we're getting that popping action right at the end there. So let's adjust the fade of the loop. Let's hear what that sounds like. Perfect. We can change this to reverse. Or alternate back and forth. Or choose to have no loop at all. And as you can see, we can zoom in and out as close or as far as we need to on our sample. Additionally, you can use control and option just like you can in any other section of Logic Pro to zoom in on a particular section of your sample in Quick Sampler. We can zoom right in just by holding control, option, click, hold, and drag over the sample and backing out by just holding control and option and clicking. We can maximize the view of the waveform by clicking on this vertical zoom button as well as horizontally zoom on our selection. All right, so from here, we can adjust the start and end of our sample to a particular section if we need. So we can play back just this section. We can also add a fade in and a fade out, either if again, we're getting those popping sounds from bad edits, or if we just want a ramping effect. You can see every time we work in the waveform view, we get these details of sample start and sample end length, fade in length, and fade out. If we just click outside the waveform, we can return the view back to these details of the root key and playback and loop, follow tempo and flex. From here, there are three modes of which we can begin sampling in Quick Sampler. To start with, we have classic mode. In classic mode, the moment that we press a key on our keyboard or the musical typing, we will begin hearing playback of our sample at that particular pitch. The moment we let go of that key, playback stops. Classic mode also affords us the ability to enable loop playback. With one shot mode, if we press a key on our controller or musical typing, regardless for how long we hold the key, the entire sample will play back. I just double clicked on the MIDI out section in the LCD to stop playback prematurely, but you saw I pressed A on my Mac's keyboard just for a second and the entire sample started playing back. One shot's great if you wanna just drop something quickly into the arrangement without having to perform it, something like a drum loop or a sound effect. And of course we could adjust the sample length and add a fade to adjust the playback of the sample so it doesn't play for as long. We could play with the amp envelope to adjust the playback as well. So let's bring this out. 
So that was very quick. If we adjust the decay, All right, the sample's not playing back for nearly as long. It's still going, but we don't hear it anymore. It's unfortunately a little beyond this video to dig into setting an envelope for the amp or filter or pitch, but just know there are many different ways that you can set the envelope for these different sections. Slice mode allows you to break up your sample into various slices or beats that you can then perform on individual keys. So for this, a better example will be our drummer region that we dragged in. And we have all these multiple samples for the entire drummer performance. If we go back to classic, press on the play button right at the beginning of the sample, I'm gonna turn off flex so we hear it at its original tempo. That's what it sounds like. If we go to slice and zoom in, we have all these different slice markers that are breaking up our sample so that we can play these individual sections on different keys on our keyboard. So we can see on C1, we have this sample. On D1, D sharp. That's pretty cool because now, if we bump down the octave on the musical typing, I can come up with my own drum beat from this drummer sample. I mean, how awesome is that? You can remove a slice marker just by double clicking. And we can see all the following slice markers have been reassigned to different keys on our keyboard. We can add a slice marker just by clicking in the waveform display. And we can move a slice marker just by clicking, holding, and dragging. Within slice mode, there are several other modes to break up your sample into different slices. At the moment, we're in transient and note mode. So Logic has analyzed our sample for transients and has placed a slice marker at every transient that it has identified. And we can adjust the sensitivity to transients with a slider. After that, we can switch the mode to that of beat divisions. So now instead of having a slice marker at every transient in the sample, we can create slices based on musical values. So for example, if we adjust this maybe to or maybe eighth notes. Then we have equal divisions. So now we're not even breaking up the sample in terms of musical divisions or by transient. It's just how many slices do you want this sample to be? At the moment, we have 16 slices. but we can set as many as 64 in this case, or one. And lastly, we could just manually enter our own slice markers just by clicking on the display. And we can see the keys that are being assigned as we create them, which by the way, if you hover your mouse in the bottom third of the waveform display and then click, hold, and drag right onto your quick sampler track lane, we now have a region in the tracks area. Let me close the musical typing. If we open the piano roll editor, we'll play back in this particular sliced arrangement. Pretty awesome. We're also hearing the Brooklyn kit in the background. That's why it sounds a little phasey. Cool, from here, maybe you just wanna record directly into Quick Sampler. You don't want to drag and drop. You have an idea and you have a microphone or an instrument plugged in ready to go. Well, you can do exactly that. We can select an input either from our audio interface or from an audio track in our project or an instrument track, as well as a bus. I'll select a guitar input from my interface and now we can see in the level meter here, some audio signal that's coming through. We can choose to monitor the signal on my guitar through Logic Pro. And with the record start set to threshold, when I press record, recording won't begin until the level of my guitar exceeds this threshold slider right here. So let's give it a try.
All right, it was that easy. Let's change the input to none. And now we can use my guitar sample that I recorded directly into Quick Sampler, either in classic mode or as a one shot, or break it up into slices. As you can see, there's a ton you can do with Quick Sampler. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more tomorrow in our newbie to ninja series. Take care.